Hey everyone, and welcome back to Joey's Retro Handhelds. I'm Joey, and today I've created the ultimate setup guide for your Pow Kitty RGB 20SX. Like all of my setup guides, I'll leave links in the description to anything that I talk about, as well as having timestamps so you can jump around to whatever spot you need. However, as usual, I would highly suggest that you watch from the beginning and just not miss anything. We're going to be installing ArcOS in this guide, which is a custom firmware that's available for the Pow Kitty RGB20SX. Personally, I think that ArcOS is a much better operating system to run than what's sent with this device, and it has great community support. So that's going to be the choice for what I'm showing in this guide. As always, before we start, you need to have a branded quality SD card and SD card reader. Don't use the SD cards that come with the device. Throw them out. This also includes the ROM SD card. If you're here before buying the device, don't buy the ROM SD card. And if you're here after, like I said, throw them out or just put them off to the side. Besides the fact that these SD cards are unbranded and low quality, they're really prone to failure and they cause a lot of issues. So you're gonna see a lot of that on Reddit and social media where people are having so many issues with SD cards. However, the bigger one is the ROMs. A lot of the ROMs are really low quality. For example, a lot of the Pokemon games won't save. So you'll see it in Pokemon Emerald. Somebody will get to the end and beat it using save states only, and suddenly you can't continue because it can't actually save in game. That is an indication of just bad low quality ROMs. And that's not the only one. So to avoid issues and potential issues, stick with good quality ROMs. And you're gonna see in a little bit what I mean. For a quality SD card and reader, it really depends on if you want to do a one SD card setup or two. If you just want one SD card, a 128 gigabyte model is fine. And like I said, I have all of this in the description. But if you're gonna be doing a two card setup, that same card would work for ROMs. And for the operating system, a 32 gigabyte or 64 gigabyte would be fine. One versus two cards is personal preference. If you're price conscious, just stick with one option. Now, like I mentioned, the last thing you're gonna need is your ROMs and BIOS library. If you just want a big list of games and then you can curate them yourself, if you'd like, you can download a ROM pack called the Tiny Best Set. This set comes with a big curated list of ROMs and BIOS files. To make things very easy for you, with a 128 gigabyte card, you want to download the following file names. Tiny Best Set Go Games.zip, Tiny Best Set Go Expansion 64 Games.zip, Tiny Best Set Go Expansion 128 Games Zip, and that's it. You can get the artwork through scraping in ArcOS, so you don't have to worry too much about the artwork part. Once you get all of those, just extract them in the same spot, and you'll suddenly have a big library of BIOS and ROMs. Then, as we go through the guide, you'll see where you can move those over. Sometimes the folder names for the systems won't match, so you just have to go inside of the folders and move the files over yourself. But it should be pretty self-explanatory. GBA is GBA, sometimes SNES is SFC, and that sort of thing, but it's pretty easy. If you want more ROMs that aren't included in this package, maybe it's missing some, that's gonna be on you to source, and I have a video on that topic, so just again, check the description. Now, one part of the ROMs is gonna be Pico 8 games. Since this device is a one by one aspect ratio, a lot of people might wanna run Pico 8. And these cost $14.99 US dollars if you want them. Let me show you how to get them directly from the website, and I'll show you again later how to add them. Head to the Pico 8 website, which is lexalawful.com slash pico 8.php, and then click the download button. Click Get Pico 8. Now you just need to check out, so enter your email and use PayPal or Amazon or your card and continue that process. You're gonna get an email that says your Pico 8 order is ready. Click the link and it'll come to a page where you can download your items. Click the Linux tab, then the Raspy button, and it should download the zip of what you need. Those will be all of the files that we need to get Pico 8 up and running. For the actual games, like the Tiny Best set, there's a collection called Pico Awesome, and we can get that through Reddit. Just click the download link and we're all set for right now. 
Okay, so we have our SD card or cards. We have an SD card reader. We have ROMs and BIOS files and Pico 8 if you want them. Let's move on. As far as software goes, the two things that we need are Rufus and 7-Zip. Head to the rufus.ie website and download the portable Rufus tool. This is going to help us format our SD card as FAT32, especially if your card is above 32 gigabytes. But just use Rufus to avoid any issues. Head to the 7-Zip website and download the EXE that matches your Windows version. So most likely it's the 64-bit option. Now let's go ahead and grab ArcOS. So jump to the ArcOS wiki, and we're going to be using the RGB30 image. Yeah, I know, we have an RGB20SX, but there's no dedicated image for this device, so we can just use the RGB30 one. Download it from Google Drive or Megalink, and after you've downloaded it, just use 7-zip to extract the zip. Don't forget to extract it, we're going to need the image file that's inside of it. Go ahead and connect your SD card to the PC using an SD card reader. For the people that are doing two cards, this will be for the operating system card, so the 64 or 32 gigabyte one. Open up Rufus and make sure the device listed is the SD card that you connected. It should match the drive size. On the right, click select and then you want to navigate to that image file that we extracted from ArcOS. Leave everything else as default and click start. Click yes to any pop-ups. Go check on some loved ones, this will take some time. From here on out, after the image is put on the SD card, you might get pop-ups in Windows that say the card is not formatted, or errors with partitions, or anything else whenever you insert this card. Ignore all of that. If you format the card or you tell Windows to fix it or anything like that, you will format the card completely and that'll just erase everything we just did. So just make sure you cancel out of those pop-ups and close them. It's just Windows not knowing how to handle this type of card. Once Rufus is done, you can safely eject the card using the taskbar and then you want to put it into the slot labeled TFOS on your device while it's powered off. Then power on the device, and it's going to reboot twice, so don't touch anything. Just let it do its thing. When you see Celeste, or the Emulation Station menu, that's when you know you're good and ready and we're done here. Now, the first thing you should do is update ArcOS. So, make sure that you're connected to Wi-Fi, and you can do so in the Options. Then, we can update. Go to the Options again, and then scroll down to Update. Click it and it's going to give you a warning about not stopping the script and making sure you're charged and all that sort of thing, so make sure all of that is correct. Then just have to write OK to get it started. Set it down and let it update. Now you might get an error like I did, and it tells you what to do but basically we just have to enable remote services. So if you happen to get this error, just scroll up a little bit, enable remote services, and go back and try updating again. Once that's all done and you're back after updating, push start, go to quit, and shut down system. Now we need to get our ROMs and BIOS files on here. So this next step depends on if you're doing the one card method or the two card method. One card method can skip this next part as I'm going to show how to get a second card working first. Connect your second card to your PC using the SD card reader. Open up Rufus and make sure the device listed is the SD card that you connected. Again, it should match the drive size. Now, this time, under boot selection, change it to non-bootable. Then check near the bottom and make sure the file system is FAT32 or large FAT32. Go ahead and click start and you might get some warnings about partitions and data and all of that. Just go ahead and click yes to all of them and get started. Should be pretty quick and it'll format your card as FAT32. When it's done, safely eject it and insert that card into the slot TF game that's on the left side of the device and make sure the operating system card is still in the TFOS slot. And then you can turn on the device. This time, when you get to the menu, head to the Options tab, then Advanced, and click Switch to SD2 for ROMs. When that's done, we're all set and the folder structures have been set up for that second SD card. Push start, go to quit, and then shut down system. Okay, so for both single and dual card users, 
connect your SD card back to your PC. For the dual card users, you're gonna be connecting the second SD card, so the one that we just formatted for ROMs. You should see an easy ROMs partition in File Explorer. Head into that if you're doing the single card method. Otherwise, if you're doing the dual card method, you're just gonna see some ROM folders. Now, if you happen to not see either of these, open up Disk Management in Windows, and you just have to assign that partition a drive letter. Either way, once you can see those partitions, it should be pretty self-explanatory at this point. These are where you would put all of your ROMs in, and you can see there's a BIOS folder as well. What you want to do now is grab your ROMs and BIOS files from the tiny best set collection that we grabbed earlier, and you can put them in the right folder. Like I mentioned before, the folder names likely don't match for a lot of them, so you're just going to have to go inside of the system folders and copy the ROM files inside, which again, ROMs are games, and then just put them in the right folders on the ArcOS SD card. Now, it's possible you might get stuck and Tiny Best Set has a name that you're not familiar with. There's two ways that you can check this. Number one, at the bottom of the Tiny Best Set page, it tells you what systems are included, and so you'll know which acronym matches what system. As well, on the ArcOS Wiki, it also tells you what the folder names are and for what system, so you can match them that way if you run into anything that's a little bit weird. BIOS files, like before, will just go in the BIOS folder. So you should have a BIOS folder from the Tiny Best Set. Just throw them all into the BIOS folder on the SD card. For those that wanted Pico 08, extract the zip that we downloaded from that website, and you'll want to grab the Pico 08, Pico 08 underscore din, and Pico 8.dat files. Then just move those into the Pico 08 ROMs folder on the SD card. Now, if you happen to download the Pico Awesome from Reddit as well, extract that zip and then grab everything inside of the Pico Awesome Pico 8 folder and put it all inside of the Carts folder, which once again is inside of the Pico 8 ROMs folder. If it asks you to replace any files, go ahead and do so. Once you've done all of that, safely eject and put your SD card and cards back into the powered off device. So if you're a single card, it goes into the TFOS slot. If you're dual cards, the operating system card is on TFOS and the ROM card is in TF game. Turn on the device and you should now see all of your games set up and ready to go. Let's get some artwork on here though, because it's missing. Back out to the main emulation station menu and push start. Head down to Scraper, and at this point, you'll want to set up an account at ScreenScraper.fr, which is the website that you need to be able to scrape some games. Then you can come back here and then enter those details in. The other options are personal preference. I don't want or need ratings or videos, so I'm going to turn that off. If you want actual box art, choose Box 2D for the image source. When you're ready, just click Scrape Now, and if you want, you can customize which systems you want to scrape, or just do the whole thing. I'm going to do the whole thing, so just click Start when you're ready. Another thing that I want to show, and that's enabling retro achievements. For those unfamiliar, you can get achievements in retro games, which is awesome. So we want that feature. If you don't have an account already, head to the Retro Achievements website and make one, as we're going to need your username and password. On the device, go to RetroArch from the main menu, and you're going to see two RetroArch options. We're going to have to do the login on both, and the steps are the same for both. So open one of them, and then head to Settings, then Achievements, and Enable Achievements, and then enter your username and password. Make sure that Hardcore Mode is disabled, just in case. Then back out to the main RetroArch menu, go into Configuration, and Save Current Configuration. Then go ahead and quit RetroArch, and repeat these steps again for the next RetroArch version. Speaking of RetroArch, there's a few settings that aren't on that should be, in my mind. First, Fast Forward isn't mapped for some reason. So let's head into RetroArch again and just pick one of them, we're going to have to do these steps for both. Then head to Settings, Input, Hotkeys, and let's select Fast Forward Toggle and make it R2. Let's also set Show FPS to Y. This makes it so when we push Select plus these hotkeys, it turns these functions on. 
so select plus R2 is fast forward, and so on. But because of this device, there's a function key right there, and it's not being used by anything. So why don't we just use it for a hotkey button? Scroll up to hotkey enable and select it, and choose the function button. So just push the function button when you enable it. Now, you'll be able to use the function button with your hotkeys instead, instead of select. If you're curious about what all of the hotkeys are, the ArcOS wiki has a list of them and what they do for every game and emulator. Back out one menu and let's turn off confirm quit if it's enabled, so you don't have to do start plus function key twice to exit a game. Now let's back out again and jump into saving. Right now, ArcOS is not auto saving the state on exit, and if you want that, enable auto save state. In the same way, when you load a game, it's not loading the state automatically. So once again, if you want that, enable it. Personally, I want both of them. It's just quicker and easier. Back out twice to get to the main RetroArch menu, then configuration and save current configuration. Quit RetroArch and then, like I said before, repeat all of these steps once again for the other RetroArch version. If you want to change your theme for ArcOS from the main menu, go to Start, then UI Settings, and you're going to see a few themes here. If you want to add more, head to the ArcOS wiki and you'll see instructions on how to do so. For those that want to play other types of games, we also have something called Portmaster. This is a bit more involved, and it would bloat this video quite a bit. But if you're interested in games that you can port over, like Stardew Valley and Shovel Knight and Undertale and games like that, check out my guide on my website, and again, it's in the description. If you're lazy, like me, and you want to load your games remotely, without having to remove the SD card and put it into your PC, we have an option called Remote Services. So, go to Options and enable Remote Services. Then, in any local network browser, type that IP address in. You have to be kind of quick to see it when you enable remote services, but it shows an IP address there. That's the one you want to put on your computer web browser or phone web browser or anywhere else. The default username and password is lowercase arc for both. Now you're able to upload, download, remove, and do whatever you want to any of the files on the ROM card. Super useful for just adding games quickly to the device. Now just jump into some games and have fun. For normal usage, that's all you need to know. And that was the main point of this guide. Get you up and running, and now the world is your oyster. Don't forget to like and sub to help the channel grow, and hope you all have a good one.